Welcome back to Inside the Heat and our historical review of 20 years of Heat basketball. Miami finished the 2002-2003 season with a 25-57 and record, but that suffering led to something very special in the form of the fifth pick in the 2003 NBA draft. With that selection, Pat Riley chose a diamond in the rough out of Marquette University. It was a dreary, cold, rainy, half-snowy night in Milwaukee. And there I am in this health club with all these Marquette fans. <laughs> these Milwaukee fans are now all in there pedaling away and watching Marquette play in the playoffs against the University of Kentucky. And I watched the kid play. He was absolutely incredible in this game. That's when I got my first real good look at him. And then obviously after that, I began to start to study more and more of his tapes and, you know, find out more and more about him. The Miami Heat are on the clock. The Heat got the fifth pick. What do you do? Everyone was debating. Dwayne Wade, triple-double, leads Marquette to the Final Four. They took the best player available. With the fifth pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Miami Heat select Dwayne Wade from Marquette University. We were very fortunate to be able to, to make the right call that day. Dwayne, you know, changed uh, everything for us. The Heat added a future and perennial all-star, but at the same time were parting ways with their signature player and their ultimate warrior. After spending eight years with the Heat, Alonzo Mourning signed with the New Jersey Nets as a free agent in July of 2003. Pat and the Heat had to make the very painful but realistic decision that we're rebuilding a new team and we got to let go of the past and move forward. While Miami was moving forward without mourning, they were discovering a future front court starter in Miami native Udonis Haslam, who made a lasting impression during the summer at the Heat's free agent camp. Way to run, way to run. He came in as a free agent, and from the first day I said, I said, well, who is this guy? Well, I said, I said, that's not Udonis Haslam. Is that Udonis Haslam from, you know, from Florida? Yeah, let's see. What happened to him? He lost 70 pounds. He was 235 pounds, about 6% body fat, and he just dominated the whole week. This story is a great story because it's really a story about a player who has great heart and he's one of the few guys in this league who feels privileged to be an NBA player. Later that summer, Pat Riley made another move, acquiring free agent Lamar Odom. What happened in that situation? Yeah. Oh, we will. We will. Oh, what's up, baby? Let's go, baby. You ready? <laughs> My dog is here. <laughs> They're calling me. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Lamar Odom is a player we had tried to get for a number of years and you know, should be remembered amongst the greatest players who've ever played in, in the Miami Heat uniform. It's my new crew, my new crew. In early September, the roster was completed with the addition of free agent point guard Rafer Alston. But just before the Heat's 16th season began, there was one more big change to come. The news came as a shock to most of the sports world. Pat Riley resigned as coach of the Miami Heat. I knew that after I'd signed Lamar, I knew that I was not going to coach the next year. I just knew it. And I told Stan in the middle of the, of the summer, be ready, be ready. He never believed me. This team needs a new voice, and we have the right man at the right time. He's just a mirror of Pat Riley. Same demands, same system. You're sliding all the way over, head even with the ball, our hands change. Just four days after being named head coach, Stan Van Gundy took the heat to Philadelphia to open the regular season against the 76ers. It was South Florida's first look at the Heat's rookie sensation. Here goes Twitch. You gotta love this young fella. <laughs> When he got into on the court against the Philadelphia 76ers and he started playing, I mean, I said, I've never seen anybody like this. There it is. This guy is special. We began to see the inklings of what was to come. And we got to see the beginning of Dwayne Wade and, and what he could do. Oh, my goodness! Dwayne Wade! There is something special about a player that comes to you through the draft and then, you know, makes that quick ascension to being a, a superstar. Dwayne Wade symbolized the, the new hope for the Heat. Wade would miss 21 games his rookie season with injuries, including two early on as the Heat lost their first seven games and 10 out of their first 15. Nobody ever panicked. Nobody pointed fingers. And they just worked on getting better every day. They didn't worry about the record. I knew they were good. Players kept developing. Lamar kept getting better. Uh, Dwayne kept getting better. He helped make basketball matter in South Florida again. Oh, what a play! Oh, my God! 
He jumped right out of the building. He's Superman. We thought that he could be a really good player. I don't think anybody knew that he could be as great a player as turned out to be. On March 2nd, Miami was still 11 games under 500 before turning their season around by winning 17 of their last 21 games. Wait, nice one for Odomu. Slams it through. A young Heat team started to rise, and on March 26th, in a nationally televised game against Dallas, America saw what South Florida was buzzing about. Butler's going to trigger the inbound. It's Austin. This is for the win. It's gone! Are you kidding me? And the NBA is back in Miami. It was an incredible run. They got healthy. They came together at the right time. And, you know, this was the season that made fans fall back in love with the Miami Heat.